Hey guys, today I'm filming a throwback Thursday of my best of beauty from 2017. I've not filmed a throwback Thursday in such a long time. It's a series I decided to discontinue for my channel, but I always have enjoyed reflecting on my yearly favorite so that is something I'm going to do today so I will have my original video linked down below and I will link my throwback Thursday playlist for you guys and we do have a decent amount of products here so I'm going to get started with the face products so the first favorite I had was the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Fair I am currently using the shade Fair Neutral which I do believe is a better shade match for me. Fair is just a little bit too pale and depending on the powder I use with it, it can look very, very bright under my eyes. And I find that Fair Neutral is still very fair, but it's slightly a little bit more yellow. It's not as white and it brightens really nicely under my eyes without looking too pasty. So this is definitely a better color for me. I've tried several other under eye concealers. I've got quite a few in my collection right now and this one is still my favorite. I think it gives the most amazing full coverage. It does have more of a satin finish. I really, really enjoy this product. I don't necessarily need full coverage. I think I can absolutely have a medium coverage concealer. I'm just looking for something that blends nicely. It doesn't pick up on itself and is a good shade match for me. And I've had a really hard time finding that. So this is still my favorite concealer and I did just buy this one when Ulta had the special diamond deal during the 21 Days of Beauty. So I got it for half off, which is amazing. But this is a fantastic product. I do highly recommend it and I would say it's definitely still a favorite. The next product was the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I just recently repurchased this in the full size. I've used up so many deluxe size samples. I had the travel size of it and I was using this powder to set under my eyes and I do still think it works great for that. This is also really nice for setting the face. What I do notice is that this does darken my concealer, so if I use this with the Tarte Shape Tape and Fair, it works out fine. But with other concealers, it will then look a little bit too dark. And this can look a little dry under my eyes. I don't mind it because I do have pretty oily under eyes. But I noticed that this one can look a little dry. So this is a powder that I do absolutely love. I'm going to be happy to use it up. But once I use this up, we'll see if it's something I want to repurchase or not. Because I actually really like the Durablend Translucent Loose Setting Powder for under my eyes. Because it's a bit more smoothing. It's not as drying. And it's a lot more brightening for me. So we'll see again once I use this up what I think of it. But the Durablend is an absolute favorite as well. But this is a great product to set the under eyes or to set the face. I do still love this and recommend it, but it might have something else I like just as much. The next powder is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in the shade Five Fair. I have been using this to set my face and I am currently using this as a mixer with other loose powders that are a little bit too dark to set my face and I currently am using this on its own to set my under eyes and this is something that I thought I had tried in the past and didn't like but I think it works well it does give nice coverage it's very brightening but this is an awesome finely milled powder that is great for coverage it makes the skin look super smooth this formula is very easy to work with it doesn't clump up on a damp sponge it works with a brush this is a phenomenal phenomenal formula good for under eyes and for face still a favorite and I highly recommend it the next product was the bare minerals bare skin sheer sun serum bronzer and this is a great product I have not used it very much 2020 I'm gonna be using my cream and liquid products a lot more at least that is my plan so we'll see how that goes so I find that a lot of liquid and cream products are hard to use but this one is not because it is that serum consistency I just put a little bit on the back of my hand then take a damp beauty sponge, pick it up, make sure I blend it out so I don't have like one splotch, and then I use it as a bronzer and it works so well. Now this can sheer out foundation a little bit. I feel like when I do it, then my freckles start coming through more, which I actually think looks very pretty. But this is a product I do really enjoy and I'm so happy I was able to find a full size of this because I'm pretty sure it has been discontinued. But this is a really good product that's very easy to use and it is pale girl friendly. But I do believe that you can build it up. This is more on the warmer side but this is definitely still a favorite of mine. It's a really good product. Then I have the MAC Mariah Carey blush and Sweet Sweet Fantasy. This is a satin finish blush. It is absolutely stunning. A beautiful pinky coral color. 
I love this blush. It has a great amount of pigment to it. It looks beautiful on the cheeks. It blends really nicely. This is definitely still a favorite. You guys know I love my MAC blushes and this one is no exception. I'm sorry for this weird shadow that keeps happening down here. It's driving me nuts right now. Then I had one brow product and that was the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil. And this is just Benefit's thick angled brow pencil. It has more of that diamond shape to it, which is so perfect for me to fill in my brows completely. You guys know I do have brows that are already pretty full and at least like the structure of my brow is pretty full. So this is so easy to quickly fill in my brows. I originally had the shade number two, but I did repurchase it in the shade number one. Either shade works really well for me. This is a phenomenal brow formula. It draws on to my skin and onto brow hairs really nicely. It's not too waxy. It's not too creamy. This is an amazing formula. The pencil lasts me a really long time. It's something that I feel like I'm always getting my money's worth. I was able to get that one during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty for half off. Good Morning America has deals on the Benefit Brow Pencils all the time, so if you can get it on sale, I would definitely pick it up, but it's a phenomenal product. Even with just a 20% off coupon, I would purchase it. Then I had a bunch of shadow combos that I was loving. This first one is using MAC True Chartreuse Pigment on my lid. I have not used this in ages, but this is a nice product. I just don't like pigments. I prefer pressed shadows, but this one is very pigmented. It's not sheer. It does build nicely to be fully opaque on the lid. It's a really, really pretty color, and it's a shame that that was either discontinued or limited edition. And then along with it, I was using Anastasia Bengal in my crease, which is one of my favorite crease colors of all time. It's a great warm shadow without being too orange. As you can see, I've used up most of it. I did recently during the Anastasia Black Friday sale, I did buy a backup single pan of it. It's a phenomenal product. I love the Anastasia eyeshadows, especially her matte formula. They are a little powdery, but I feel that they're very pigmented and blend very nicely. And she has so many great neutral colors. So definitely love that shade still. And then for my transition color. I know all these look the same. It was Anastasia Birkin, which again is a nice light warm tone, more peachy tan color, but it's not too orange. So I always love pairing Birkin and Bengal together, but I did actually buy a backup of this single pan as well because I've used up so much, but the two Anastasia shadows are still all-time favorites. I can't say the same about the MAC pigment because I haven't used it in, in probably about a year. Then I had some more singles that I was loving, and these are two Mickey Beak shadows. This is Bake Sale, and this is Frappe. I was using this as my transition color, this one as my crease color with several different singles on the eyes, and these are also some great warm tone colors, and I absolutely love them. Both of these shades have really great formulas, very pigmented, easy to blend. I have had a few duds from Makeup Geek where the eyeshadow just feels so tightly packed it's hard to pick up on a brush but the two of these are great. I definitely love Frappe a little bit more than Bake Sale. As you can see I have hit paint on this one but I definitely do recommend those shades. My next eye look was using this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in 8 track on my lid which looks like a dirty golden bronze here but on my eye and with the other eyeshadows I pair it with it does look more like a beautiful golden olive which you guys know how much I love olive shadows and this is a pearlized finish which is my favorite and this is definitely still a favorite single of mine and then in my outer corner I was using Anastasia Isabel. This is from the Master Palette by Mario. I love that color. I don't have anything quite like that in my collection. The other oranges I have are a little brighter and this has that nice dusty quality to it. Very pigmented, blends out nicely. And then I, I can't remember the transition and crease color I was using with it but I know that those two eyeshadows were like the main stars of the show. Absolutely still love both of them and I really love that look. And my next eye look was something that I had envisioned in my mind for a really long time and then I finally just created the look and I ended up really loving it that year. So on my lid I was using the Urban Decay Moon Dust Eyeshadow in Solstice which is like a blue that flashes like a pinky red. It's a very pretty shimmery color. And then in my outer corner 
I was using this Clinique eyeshadow in Raspberry Beret, which is a matte eyeshadow. I also have not worn this look in over a year. I still think it's a pretty look. I think these eyeshadows both perform really nicely, but I wouldn't call it a favorite anymore just because I haven't really used it. And then my next eyeshadow combo was using ColourPop board shorts on my lid, which is a really pretty golden bronze color that has some more of that like orangey base to it. I am not super blown away by the ColourPop singles. I think the palettes work really well. The singles I'm just so so on, especially the more of the shimmery shades, but that one is very pigmented. It has a lot of shine to it. I am very impressed by this single in particular, so that is still a favorite. And then for the shades I was pairing it with would be coming from the ColourPop Yes Please palette, which is one of my favorite palettes from ColourPop. This is a Natasha Denona Sunset dupe. So I was using Champs as my transition color note to self as my crease color and GNO or girls night out as my outer corner color absolutely still love all three of those shades this is a really well performing palette so that is definitely still a favorite next I had two more eyeshadows and these were just full palettes that I really loved the first was a Too Faced sweet peach palette I'm sure I did do a palette of the month review on it which I will link for you guys but this is what the palette looks like. I have used up one of the matte creams. I just did that recently. I love these two mattes and this matte here for transition crease outer corner colors for me. And a lot of these other shades are very beautiful on the lid. However, this palette is not a favorite of mine anymore. These shades are shimmery, but they're not metallic, and I love metallic eyeshadows. I definitely think with some of the newer Too Faced palettes that have come out, like gingerbread spice and the gingerbread extra spicy palette those are more pigmented they're more rich more metallic and I think more metallic <laughs> and I think those are more impressive than this one I don't regret having this I did create some good looks with it I do want to pull it out again and use it more but right now it just feels like it's a little dusty a little muted and normally I like those kind of colors but I'm just not feeling drawn to this palette anymore so I wouldn't call it a favorite. The last palette is the uh, Juvia's Place Masquerade and this is the mini version. I wish that Juvia's Place would make all of their palettes in the minis and I think that they're starting to do so because they realize we don't all want those huge palettes and I will link my palette of the month video as well because I came up with some really awesome looks that I really enjoyed and I love that it's two rows of shim I mean two rows of color and two rows of neutrals but I'm not blown away by this formula. I feel like these shimmers are so oily that if you get any fallout on your face, you cannot brush it away. It just starts to like melt into your skin. And I had some issues working with it, but it is a really pretty palette. The colors are pretty, and I know how to work with it now. I, I wouldn't call this a favorite any longer. Again, I did create some looks that I really love and I'm proud of, but I have not used this palette since I filmed that video with it which is sad but I guess it's not too uncommon considering how many palettes I have. So with that Juvia's Place palette I do still think it's good but it's not something I would consider a favorite any longer. Then I had just a few lip products and that would be the ColourPop Aquarius Lip Trio. I believe I also had a video on that which I will link for you guys because I don't have any of the products anymore. So it was an ultra matte, ultra satin, and ultra glossy lip all in the shade Aquarius and each of them was a slightly different color. The matte lip was a little bit more tan, satin lip was more peach, and the gloss was more pink. And I loved all three of those nudes on me. I think they were really my perfect nudes color wise and unfortunately they've all gone bad. I've had to get rid of all of them. Out of all of them I would want most to repurchase the glossy lip because it was a great formula. It was a beautiful milky pink mauve lip color on me. I am not purchasing hardly any ColourPop lip products anymore just because they do go bad very quickly but I will certainly hope it has the doe foot applicator like it did originally instead of the brush tip applicator like some of the ColourPop glosses now and they seem to be a little bit inconsistent with whether it's going to be a doe foot or a brush but like nobody likes a brush I don't know why they would do that so I love these products I love the formulas the 
matte lip from ColourPop has changed so many times over the years that you never really know what formula you're getting. That one's not my most favorite, but the satin formula is incredible and I do like the gloss formula as well. So those products are no longer favorites because I don't have them in my collection and because ColourPop products, lip products that are liquid go bad very quickly. So I probably am not gonna buy any of them again, even though I think that they're great. Then I had some nail polishes. So I had some from Formula X, which is a brand that's no longer around. I bought these on super sale. So I had gotten Legendary and High Frequency, which were like minty aqua colors. And I showed you pictures of them and all these polishes on my nails in the original video, if you would like to check that out. And I still have those two in my collection, but I didn't bring them out to show you. Those two, I wouldn't say are favorites of mine anymore, just because I have so many similar shades. However, I do really love this color, which is impeccable. And it looks really weird right now. The color settled and it started looking brown on the bottom. It just needs to be shaken up. It's a really pretty light, tan mauve color. It's a great formula. I do wish this brand was still around, but for $15 or however much it costs, I wouldn't buy them for that price. But for the discounted price, I think they're amazing. So it's a shame it's not available anymore, but I did like that color a lot. Then this was the first year I tried KL Polish, which is crazy to think about because I have so many and it's not around anymore, which still hurts my heart. So these are the three polishes I had tried and mentioned in that video. Brick Sidewalk, which looks more orange here, but on my nails, it definitely looks a little bit more red. Then we've got Zoe, which is a pretty mauve that's a lot more cool tone. And then we have Caramello, which is a mustard color. Brick Sidewalk is not my most favorite. I've got other shades from her that are more orange or more red that I prefer over this one, but I'm not gonna get rid of it. I do really like Zoe now. There are a lot of other very similar shades from K.O. Polish now when she did that Lips and Tips collection where she was making polishes to replicate the lip colors that she had come out with, with ColourPop. So there's a lot of things that are really similar to this one, but I do still really love it. And I do still really love Caramello as well because it is something very unique in my collection. And then I had one from 90 Lacquer, which is a YouTube brand from Just Space 90. I did purchase some more polishes during her Black Friday sale as well. And this one is Frost. It was from her winter collection, but I tend to reach for this in the fall. This is a beautiful, turquoisey teal. I really don't know how to describe this blue, but it's got some silver and white holographic particles in it. It looks so beautiful on the nails and she has a really awesome formula with some really, really unique shades. And if you want to support an amazing YouTuber, I would definitely recommend you check out her brand. And the last nail product I mentioned was the Jolie G Quick Dry Top Coat, which I do think is a good one. However, I'm currently using Sesh Feet and I like that one more. It's more readily available. I can buy it for Ulta. I can get it with a coupon. And I think that the Sesh Feet makes my nails look shiny. It keeps my polish on longer. So that's what I'm going to be purchasing instead. But the Julie G is still a very good quick dry top coat. It can get a little thick towards the middle of the bottle. Same as Sesh Feet. So I would recommend buying some nail polish thinner. You can buy it from Sally Beauty and it's only a couple of dollars and it looks like a small bottle but mine has lasted me ages so I definitely recommend that. Then I had some skincare products. The first one is the Tarte Friction Stick which is an exfoliator in a stick form. I haven't used it since then. I've not heard anybody talk about it. Unfortunately they've not included it in little freebies because I want to try it again. I just don't know if I can pay that price but I do want to try it again to see if I really love it because I've been using a lot of little mini scrubs recently in my sample project pan series and I've really not been enjoying them because they're too creamy. There's not enough exfoliating bits and I don't feel like it's properly exfoliating my skin, but this one was so good. So it is a product that I believe I still love, but I can't quite recommend it as much as I would like because I haven't used it in two years. My last skincare favorite was the Belief True Cream Aqua Bomb. This is still my favorite daytime moisturizer. I have a bunch of foil samples. Whenever you can get foil samples from Sephora, I highly recommend it because they actually come with a lot of product compared to other foil samples. And 
This is a nice gel-based moisturizer, perfect for my skin during the daytime. I can use it all year round. I do like the moisturizing balm as well for the nighttime, but the Belief is definitely one of my favorites, and I will eventually purchase it in the full size, which will be hard because it's so expensive, but it is a phenomenal moisturizer for my skin type, and I do really recommend it. Then I had one perfume, and two years ago, I just had the rollerball that I was loving. I did use it up and I do now have the 3.4 ounce full size bottle. This is an amazing scent. I know it's been around for ages, but I do think it smells so good. It is my favorite perfume for the springtime. It's just so fresh. It's very floral, but it's a little bit sweet as well. And unfortunately this one is an eau de toilette, so it doesn't last the longest on my skin, but it is still my go-to spring perfume. So this one is definitely still a favorite. And lastly, I had some Morphe brushes that I was loving. And I think I pulled out all the right ones. And this first one is the Morphe E48. So this is from their Elite Collection, which is a little bit more expensive, but I do feel like the quality of these brushes are much better. These hold up longer than some of the other brushes. Some of my other brushes, after several washings, they've gotten a little scratchy, a little rough, but not the Elite brushes. They're just very, very soft. So this is the mini pointed blender brush. So I use this to press powder under my eye. I do also use this to swoop away any fallout from eyeshadow or whatnot. This one is definitely still a favorite brush of mine, but more often than not, I am using a loose powder with a damp beauty sponge under my eyes. But when I am looking to use a pressed powder under my eye, this is the brush I would apply it with. Then I have the Morphe M523, which is the tapered powder brush. and this is a brush I'm currently using to contour. It fits in the hollow of my cheek, so perfectly to apply my contour, but it's not gonna be too precise. It's gonna help blend it out a lot as well. This is a great brush. I have several other contour brushes, but this one is really great. It has maintained its shape, its softness. I do really recommend this one for bronzing and for contouring. My last face brush is the Morphe M501 for highlighting, and I also have the M510. I think this is better because it's a little bit more precise and it does pick up highlighter a little better. I'm currently using the Morphe Jeffree Star highlighter brush, but I'm pretty sure it's this one. Like, it has white bristles, so maybe that one is like the F10, but I mean the 510, but. The highlight brushes are very similar. I'm just using the Jeffree Star one right now, but this is a really great precise highlighting brush and I definitely would recommend this one. And then I had two eye brush favorites and these are from the Rose Gold Collection, which are a little bit more expensive too. However, these ones have gotten a little scratchy with all of the washes. So, and I've used them so much that the writing has completely rubbed off, so. Oh gosh, let me see if there's any remnants. Okay, this one's the R39 tapered blender, and this is the R38 round blender. So the tapered blender is one I use as my crease brush, and then the round blender I use to apply my transition color. Both of these I think work really well. I feel like this type of brush just holds its shape and holds up better than this kind. This one is still pretty good, but the one I have from Sigma, I just had to throw it away because it got like skinnier and skinnier. It lost more hair or something about this shape, but this is a perfect shape for me for a crease brush. So I do think that both of these work really well and I do really recommend them. Like I said, they've gotten a little bit scratchy, but not that bad. It isn't uncomfortable or anything, but I did want to let you know that. And I have gotten several more Morphe brushes since then, especially over this past year, and I really like Morphe brushes in general. So I would love to know your all's thoughts on these products in the comments down below. Coming up soon will be my yearly favorites for 2019, and I'm so excited to film that video, and I really need to sit down and think about all the products that I've used all year long that I may not have put in an actual seasonal favorites video. I don't want to leave out anything, so it's going to take me a minute to get all those products together. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.